Looks okay. good, Frank. Great. Yeah, so I'd like to give an introduction to prediction predictive variable selection. Um, so first, an introduction to the introduction. Uh, prediction predictive variable selection, here abbreviated by PPVS, is a special variable selection technique for Bayesian regression models. It's implemented in the R package ProjPred. And apart from the variable selection itself, it also allows for at least approximately valid post-selection inference. I've added approximately here because it is not validated for the selection of a submodel size, but typically the overfitting induced by the selection of the size is small. A key component of uh, the PPVS is that it requires a so-called reference model which is the best possible model in terms of predictive performance that one can construct. Often, this is the full model with some shrinkage prior for the regression coefficients. I've added some example papers down here which illustrate this. But sometimes, and again, example papers down here, it can also be necessary to perform a dimension reduction for the predictors. For example, by computing principal components, from the original predictors, then using these principal components as predictors in the reference model, but then still performing the variable selection in terms of the original predictors. Then the aim of the PPVS is to select the smallest submodel achieving the best predictive performance with respect to the reference model's posterior predictive distribution. In other words, we aim for a trade-off between sparsity and predictive accuracy. And as you can guess from the name, the projection is a key step of the PPVS. And by projection, we mean the projection of the reference model's posterior distribution onto the parameter space of a given submodel. Typically, this is done after clustering or thinning the reference model's posterior draws, simply for speeding up the computations. And then the projection itself consists of the minimization of the callback leibler divergence from the reference model's predictive distribution to the submodel's predictive distribution. I'm simply saying the predictive distribution here. Um, the details are, are a little more complicated, um, but that's not the point here. Frank, and, really quick, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, are you yep. advancing your slides on, on your machine? We don't see um, advancing slides. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, um, then it didn't work to... There we go, then. okay. Okay, sorry. Oh, no problem, um, thank you. Okay, so the prediction problem in general is not easy to solve because it, invo it involves an expectation over the reference model's predictive distribution. But often it can be shown that the projection is equivalent to fitting to the fit of the reference model. And this is also the key idea behind it. Yeah, so now we want to head over to an example in R. And for this, we'll use the body fat data set from the th.data package. And um, yeah, here I'm centering and scaling the predictor variables. Um, at least the scaling is necessary for the R2D2 prior, which we'll use afterwards for fitting the reference model. And here you can see the resulting data set. It has 71 observations with 10 variables. Dex fat is the response. All others are predictor variables, and all of them are continuous. So we continue with fitting the reference model here using the BRMS package. And yeah, for the model formula, we use log dex fat as response and all other variables as predictors, including their two-way interactions. We use the Gaussian family and the data set we just saw for the prior we're using the default priors for all parameters except for the regression coefficients for which we are using the R2D2 prior with some customized parameters. I've hidden some details here that are provided in the full code that I uploaded to the website. Um, yeah, so this was with BRMS um, for ProjPred. Um, 
the reference model usually comes from either BRMS or R than ARM. But in general, the reference model is not restricted to be a model that is based on the STAN software. Yeah, after <coughs> fitting the reference model, um, we need to go through the typical steps after fitting a Bayesian model. Uh, first of all, we need to check the MCMC diagnostics to ensure that the Markov chains have converged with the desired efficiency. And we usually want to inspect some basic posterior quantities. And this is important, especially for ProjPred, we usually want to conduct some predictive checks. I've skipped these steps here because they're not the focus of the presentation, but um, yeah, they're non, they're still important. Yeah, so now we can head over to ProjPred, um, which has two main functions, Varsel and CV Varsel. And I'd like to describe shortly what they do. First, Vicel, it consists first of a so-called heuristic search, which is either a forward search or an L1 search. And thereby, we're fitting to the fit of the reference model. So we're performing some kind of projection, an L1 penalized projection in the L1 search case, and otherwise, uh, the usual projection in the forward search case. And the output of this is then the so-called solution path, which is simply the best submodel for each size, or in other words, a ranking of the predictor terms. The second step is then a performance evaluation, which means that we evaluate the predictive performance of the submodels along the solution path. For example, using the mean log predictive density, MLPD, as a performance statistic. The internal procedure of CV Varsel is basically the same as for Varsel, but with a cross validation around the whole procedure, either K fold CV or Pareto smoothed importance sampling leave one out CV. So this pieces loose CV is an approximate but quite fast um, loose CV. The extent of the cross validation within CV Varsel is mainly determined by this argument validate search, which when set to true means that the search is included in the cross validation. Um, and when set to false, we simply run a full data search. So not fold wise searches. And yeah, as you can guess, validate search true is recommended over validate search false because it protects more rigorously against overfitting. And um, both CV Varsel um, variants are recommended over Varsel. Uh, validate search uh, false is currently only possible with pieces loose CV. But yeah. And I also want to mention that Varsel also offers the evaluation on an independent holdout data set, but this is something that I won't illustrate afterwards. So now we continue with ProjPred with the code. Here I'm using version 2.5.0. And the main step is to call CV Varsel um, here with a K fold CV, which, as I said, implies validate search true. And I'm setting n terms max to 10 here. Um, n terms max controls the submodel size up to which the search is continued. Here, this specific value of 10 comes from a preliminary run of CV Varsel. Um, yeah, the, the main vignette of the package shows how such a preliminary run can look like. And after CV running CV Varsel, we can then plot the results. Um, so here we're using MLPD as performance statistic. And I've also set deltas to true, which means that we're not looking at the MLPD, but the submodel MLPD minus the reference model MLPD. So the dashed red horizontal line, which corresponds to the reference model, is at zero. And then for the MLPD and also this MLPD difference, um, the higher the values, the better. So with help of this plot, we then want to pick a submodel size for the final submodel. And 
here a natural choice would be six, at least uh, if the focus is predictive accuracy and not sparsity. Um, but we can see this more clearly here in the next plot, which is simply a zoomed plot, where the yeah, where we see that submodel size seven leads only to a minor improvement in terms of predictive performance compared to size six. So we continue with size six. This is our manual choice. And ProjPet also offers a function called suggest size, which is able to automatically um, give a recommendation. But this is a rather heuristic decision um, here we continue with size six. Yeah, then for, for constructing the final submodel, we need to retrieve the corresponding predictor terms. So first of all, we retrieve the full solution path from the CV Varsal output. This is simply a character vector of ranked predictor terms. So the most predictive or the most relevant one is first. And then we cut off this um, character vector at the selected size of six. So we pick anthro four to knee breadth as the predict predictor terms for our final submodel. Then for post selection inference with this selected submodel, we need to project the reference model onto it once again. This is done by applying the project function and passing the selected predictor terms to the solution terms argument. And then we can apply the S dot matrix function, which gives us then a matrix of projected posterior draws, uh, which can be used like any matrix of MCMC draws, but with some caveats. Um, first of all, in case of a clustered projection, we need to take the cluster weights into account. And we need to be cautious with regard to the interpretation because the projected regression coefficients do not reflect isolated effects in general. Yeah, and with this matrix, we can then continue as with other matrices of MCMC draws. For example, we can apply the posterior package to um, compute basic quantities for the marginals of the projected posterior, for example, median, MAD, and some quantiles. We can also visualize the marginals of the projected posterior here using the base plot package. And then we can also make predictions based on the projected posterior. There are two options for this in ProjPred. The first one is ProjLinPred which is similar to posterior linpred methods from RSNR and BRMS and so on. And the idea here is to calculate linear predictors, but also to possibly transform them to the response scale by applying the inverse link function. Proto-linpred also has an argument called integrated, which when set to true will average the possibly transformed linear predictors across the projected draws. We will see this in a minute. And the other option is proj predict, which is similar to posterior predict methods, which uh, gives us draws from the posterior projection predictive distributions. And it encompasses the uncertainty not only from parameter esti estimation, but also from the observation model, which is the Gaussian observation model with its residual standard deviation in our case. And yeah, this is useful for what would have to be termed a posterior projection predictive check, PPPC. And we will see this also in a minute. So first, ProjLinPred, um, supposing we have the following three new observations um, for the predictor variables of the selected submodel. We can then compute the expected values of the corresponding posterior projection predictive distributions. Um, yeah, so the key step here is to call ProjLinPred. Um, here we're using integrated true, which gives us a single value per new observation. <clears throat> and yeah, I've appended them simply to the to the new data set here. Um, as I said, ProjPredict is helpful for a PPPC. Here I'm using the base plot package for visualization. 
Um, yeah, so we call project predict with um, no actual new data. So we calculate in sample predictions. And yeah, um, these in sample predictions are these light blue kernel density estimates. And the observed response values are the dark blue kernel, t kernel density estimate. And um, from the fact that they mostly agree, we can um, conclude that at least in this regard, the final submodel is a reasonable one. Yeah, now I'd like to say something more about the supported models in ProjPred. Um, in terms of the response, ProjPred has the so-called traditional prediction, which works for the Gaussian family that we just saw, the binomial family, and the Poisson family. Uh, recently, the augmented data prediction has been added, which adds support for the cumulative family from BRMS, which is an ordinal, ordinal family, and the same observation model as uh, Stan P O L R fits from R Stan Arm. And the augmented data projection also adds support for the categorical family from BRMS, which is also known as a multinomial logistic regression. Yeah, recently the latent projection has been added as well, which also adds support, native support for um, the cumulative family from BRMS and uh, Stan P O L R fits from R Stan Arm. But the latent projection is a much more general principle. Uh, so it also supports many more families in a custom way. So in that case, a little more input is required from the user. On the side of the predictors, um, ProjPet supports conventional or population level terms, multi-level or group level terms, and as an experimental feature, additive or smooth terms. Yeah, for further information, you can take a look at the main vignette. Um, it has a section on supported types of models. Now, here I've appended uh, some slides concerning the history of the PPVS for those who are interested, but I'm not going through this in detail now. And yeah, the remaining slides are references. And then I'd like to thank you for your attention and I'm excited to hear your questions. Thank you so much, Frank. Okay, we'll give everyone a minute to um, put some questions in the chat for Frank. Um, none quite yet. We made sure that um, we were linking everyone to the materials for your talk, Frank, so you can validate uh, that those links are correct. We'll give it a few seconds for people to chime in. Yeah, and sorry for the beginning where the slides were not advancing. Um, so the slides are available on the website. Sorry for that. Excellent, no problem. Okay, we have a question in the chat from Ben. How does suggest size work? What is heuristic involved? Yeah, um, simply, um, basically, it looks at the plot uh, that we saw, the predictive performance plot, and then it picks that size where the, the, the error bar, the upper end of the error bar, um, is above the reference model's dashed red horizontal line. This is basically the, the idea behind it. So it, it's more focused on sparsity. Excellent. All right, if there are any other questions, we do have a few more seconds, but we can work on um, getting our next speaker lined up. <clears throat> 